morning. We have just arrived at Amber Palace and we had the most local experience getting here. Last night, Nick was a genius and found out that instead of taking an expensive tuk-tuk ride up here, there was a bus from Hawa Mahal, which is like a two, three minute walk from our hotel that takes you directly here. Our understanding was that you get it at this roundabout and you pay on the bus, but there's no bus stop signs or anything. So we asked the local police and they're like, oh yeah, this is the bus. I think that there were three possible buses, two with air conditioning and one more local. I think we got on the local bus because we were the only foreigners on this bus and everyone was staring at us. But the great thing is that it only cost us a total of 40 rupees, which is less than a dollar to get up here. So now we have just had another inexpensive chai and now we're gonna go check out the fort. So let's go. Welcome to yet another of India's UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This is Amber Fort, which was constructed in 1592 by Rajaman Singh I, who was the presiding emperor of Jaipur at the time. Like so many other things we've seen, it is made of red sandstone and white marble. It sits in the town of Amar, India, which is just outside of Jaipur and it is absolutely beautiful around here it's very hilly and this fort even overlooks a lake you will also notice that we've got some footage of some people riding elephants up the fort i'm very much in two minds about this while i am a big fan of all things wildlife and it's an amazing once in a lifetime thing to really see an elephant in one of its native homelands Apparently, by riding an elephant, you're actually hurting it. They're not designed to be carrying people. And outside of that, apparently, they're not treated very well by the people who are running these rides. So with that, I'm happy to be able to admire them, but I would much rather be doing that in a kinder setting, such as a sanctuary or better still in the wild. So if you come here, just walk up. Amber Palace was a thousand and four rupees, which is about 17 Canadian dollars.
from this angle, it's really easy to see the private quarters here. Over this way, we have the Hall of Private Audience. And then on the other side, we have the Pleasure Palace where the Maharaja and his family could completely retreat and be by themselves. part to Amber Fort that we've seen is the ladies' apartment. And I think I'm starting to get a hang of the layout for all of the ports that we're seeing in that they all have halls of public audiences, halls of private audiences, hammams, and then the actual royal palace where the ruling family lived. I think this palace has been my favorite. All of them have been gorgeous, but the gates at this one are particularly stunning. But the best part, in my opinion, about coming here is that unlike the others where you see just the exterior, here you can actually wander through all of the interior rooms. It's a maze and you could get so lost. I think that's also been my observation. I think probably one of the other really good parts about this is that every single little point of interest does have an information board about it. It's not just about specific buildings or anything like that. It's each of the gates that has a nice decoration on it. It has its own feature. There was even a sacred basil plant that had its own thing where you could understand why it was significant. And just all of those additional little bits of attention to detail have just really added to this, I think. So yeah, all in all, this has actually been really, really good. Uh, to be completely transparent, I've had a bit of an anxiety about today. Felt quite boxed in as a result of that whole local bus experience. This isn't to say that everybody else will feel like this. I know that this may just be me, but no, I think it's just been um, something that I don't think I was mentally prepared for. And so I think I've just had a bit of a hard time shaking it off. But thankfully, about sort of midway through the visit, I had a bit of a sit down, a bit of an opportunity to breathe a little. And it's been nice because I've now been able to truly appreciate this for what it is, which is spectacular. Not just within the fort itself, but also outside, because I'm not sure if you've seen some of the shots, but definitely the mountains, the wall that runs all along them, and the greenery around is equally spectacular. Yeah, the fort itself and the setting are just spectacular. If you're going to pick one of the forts that we've seen so far, I think this is the one I would pick. Yeah, I would agree. Like, there's definitely a reason why there's so many people here. We think that if you are going to be coming to the Golden Triangle or India in general, then you should definitely be putting this on your list. And again, what makes this so special is that you can walk around the whole fort and palace. But I think now we're gonna try and find some food. Yeah, it is 10.45 and we haven't eaten yet. Yep, let's sort that out. Let's not be hangry people. No one likes hangry people. After filling up on onion kachori, we are now walking to Panamina Kakun, which is basically the dry pour step well. me might look like an MC Escher painting. This is actually the step well which served the whole town of Amma including the fort that we've been to. Rumour has it that this was built back in the 16th century and measures 200 meters deep. That is absolutely massive. But aside from being a reliable source of drinking water that during rainy season would go as high as some of these top steps here, this is also a place of community. This was a place where people had the opportunity to catch up on each other's lives and was a social meeting point. This is amazing. It's definitely one of the most unique things that I think I've ever seen and I mean obviously we're not particularly well versed on stepwell architecture having only seen one before this but it's just so remarkably different.
to even that that makes this just really interesting. I guess the cool thing about this is obviously there are so many different access points and so many different ways to be able to get down to take the water that I guess this was really intended for kind of multiple uses at one point rather than just allowing for sort of a small set of people to go down at once to fetch what they needed. I think it's just genius. Like the overall design is not just functional, but aesthetically is very, very pleasing on the eye. The symmetry is gorgeous. It's a little bit disconcerting that one would deem water which has living fish in it to be drinkable, but you know, that's to each their own. And it might not have always been that way. Maybe not. But yeah, this is just so architecturally interesting and stunning. And it's so different than the one we saw in Delhi, which was literally a straight staircase down. Not to say that it wasn't beautiful, but the stairs in this case are the decor. They are the future, the way they have been designed. Who knows, by the end of this, we might be Stepwell aficionados. We now have to figure out how to take the public bus back to Hawa Mahal, so wish us luck. While we've been in Jaipur, we've tried a lot of amazing food. And one of the things that we saw on the street, didn't know what it was, and just decided to give a go, was this kind of like deep fried potato pancake thing that they break up in a bowl. And then they put a chickpea curry on top with some other kind of sauce as well. And it ends up being sweet and spicy. It's absolutely divine. And for 40 rupees, each, then we couldn't really turn it down. Yeah, when dinner costs 80 rupees, which is what, like a dollar and 30 cents for both of us, you can't pass that up. Not really. And it's delicious. So for our last night in Jaipur, that's what we've gone for. We haven't got much planned other than just enjoying this. So that will be it from us for today. But we'll look ahead to catching up with you next time in our next city of Jopo. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.